At a previous meeting, several of the members mentioned the challenge of uh, managing the most senior information technology manager in, an organ in the organization. Let's call this individual the Chief Information Officer, in short, CIO. It seems that world over, the CEO and CIO do not speak the same language and the gap between the two has yet to be bridged. This has resulted in lots of conflict and lack of synergy between the two that translates to loss, lost business opportunities and in some cases major business catastrophes that can even lead to collapse of the organization in the long run. According to Jeff Walker, some of the negative acronyms for the CIO have been Chief Inertia Officer, whereby the CIO fails to respond or steer the organization towards change and instead continues in the same direction. Chief Impediment Officer, whereby the CIO fails to make IT an enabler of business and further does not seek to smooth transition in the organization towards an IT environment. Chief Inefficiency Officer, whereby the CIO fails to implement efficient IT infrastructure and instead retains redundant infrastructure to the point of its failure. Based on the different views regards the Chief Information Officer, as Syndicate D, we intend to discuss the following. The role and responsibilities of the CIO. Second, the person and skills required for this role. How to assess the performance of the CIO. And finally, how to effectively manage the CIO. Additionally, the role has been viewed as a technological expert, uh, the guy who ensures that we have consistent availability. But more recently, the role has changed and has been viewed as a strategic business partner. Uh, my name is Joseph Oteno. I'm uh, the CIO for City. I manage uh, East Africa. I'm the person who ties in the business strategy with the real world, you know, the real technology world. Part of the information we've gathered in preparing for this session summarizes the role of the CIO into three main management responsibilities. The first one is managing IT projects, infrastructure and operations. Managing business and operations includes infrastructure lifestyle management, that is when you need to introduce new equipment and managing it through its useful life and how to securely dispose of it. In operations, uh, it has to do with ensuring consistent delivery of high level of effective service in line with the service level agreement. This includes managing the service monitoring and reporting. On the part of IT projects, however, they must be completed on time, in full, and on the specifications and within the budget. Secondly is managing business information. He needs to be able to manage information through flow through the various stages of the business processes, especially areas where automation would add value. Uh, this requires a thorough understanding of the key business processes and when what they deliver to the organization. He's also a key player in analyzing and constant review of business processes to ensure that they remain relevant to the organization's goals and objectives. In the event of any material deviations, should um, in the event of any material devi deviations, they should trigger initiatives to engineer the entire process. Okay, managing business information includes ensuring accuracy and integrity of data circulating within and outside the organization. It also involves the security of the information and ensuring appropriate information access, complete with the with information security and business continuity planning elements. Thirdly is managing business IT strategy. In the development of business IT strategy, it is imperative that he demonstrates a clear understanding of general management, uh, business strategy and operational issues. This will ensure that the IT strategy is aligned to the business strategy. Uh, this would come as a result of maintaining a close working relationship with functional managers, uh, actively seeking their input and giving feedback on various elements of the strategy. I do a lot of, uh, let's say, really interpretations of what the business requires uh, to achieve these objectives. So um, what happens is that um, the strategy, I draw it from the business, uh, which probably might be in terms of uh, revenues, in terms of uh, system improvements, in terms of efficiencies or pro process improvements. Uh, those come to me for analysis and eventual implementation. Uh, so basically what it boils down to, I must run a budget, I must have a headcount to do it, 
and basically I must also have the bigger world to help me uh, uh, achieve those objectives. Basically bigger worlds I mean we have technology companies which come in, we have various vendors who also provide us with services and do all those coordinations to make sure that all these are put together and achieved. Apart from that, uh, I'm also in charge of making sure that uh, there are certain policies of the bank which must be implemented. Uh, for example, given this a bank, you know, in terms of risks, we do a lot of risk assessment uh, and, uh, and given that we also use technology, we must make sure it is safe to use and that there are no loopholes where probably things can fall through. So I'm also in charge of uh, managing policy and making sure they're implemented. CIOs of the future must be multidimensional in order to increase their impact as well as lengthen their service in the organization. To quote Jeff Walker, CIOs must not only work at the strategy level but also understand and relate to the details. They must understand and preserve that which is optimally efficient yet also master the courage to find what could work better. They must be part lawyer, part technician, part mediator and part change agents. They must be as much at home in the business environment as they are in the technical, end of quote. A CIO is a bridge between IT and the business, whose predominant role is to ensure that IT supports the business objectives. Five key attributes or skill sets that CEOs need to look out for. For starters, communication. It is a soft skill that are often the hardest to gain. Most notably, the art of good communication. This means the ability to communicate and influence at all levels. The second role being leadership. Strong leadership is one of the key attributes of the very best CIOs. And this means leadership as opposed to simply good management. Good leaders inspire and motivate their teams and drive them to achieve remarkable things. Leadership is not something that comes naturally for many who rise through the traditional IT ranks. And it is more than just having charisma and presence. The third attribute being business acumen. The individual needs to have broad cross functional knowledge of business operations. The CIO must be fully aware of the market, industry, competitor and political dynamics in the country within which the organization conducts his business. The person is a key contributor to the delivery of the strategic plan. We then we have entrepreneurialism. For any CIO, it is vision that differentiates him or her from a more traditional IT director. Now these factors include innovation, creativity, flair, and entrepreneurial spirit. According to Steve Prentice, VP and distinguished analyst at the Gartner, he says, the IT industry is missing visionaries who can challenge conventional wisdom. A good CIO, therefore, is a bold person and takes risks, both in their decision making and with their own career. They are ambitious and are prepared to put their head above the parapet, driven by restlessness that pushes them outside their comfort zone. Finally, a good CIO needs to have some, some tech savvy ability. Being a technical expert on, his, on its own won't get you to the top of the tree, of course. But a good CIO must have a practical understanding of technology fundamentals in order to make the right strategic calls about the deployment and exploitation of IT. In terms of skills, uh, if you look at it, um, uh, I've been in this probably uh, for the last 12 years in different roles. And um, alongside this, I've picked a number of skills which probably I feel somebody who would come and sit in my role today should have or uh, should be able to uh, run this position very well. You need to do analytical kind of jobs. You know, the business will give you some kind of, let's say, um, it be, to them, it will be a challenge of revenue. But you have to probably uh, interpret this as some kind of a system to put together to provide uh, this kind of a channel for them to deliver these revenues. So uh, you really must have some good IT background and uh, especially the professional courses are very important. Yeah, this stems from the networks uh, and the platforms uh, which you need to have certifications on them. Uh, and apart from that, you require knowledge in finance and uh, soft skills uh, like people management, uh, leadership kind of training you require. All these qualifications point to one thing, you must understand how the business works. Because if you don't understand it, you're not be able to deliver uh, these requirements. 
and that's very important. For example, uh, in my area, uh, you realize that um, we get give solutions to each and every department in the organization, uh, which stems from the, somebody uh, doing telefunctions to somebody doing credit functions, or somebody probably doing the treasury functions. So you really must uh, understand how the business operates uh, to offer this solution. The actual assessment will be based on the first and foremost service delivery within appropriate budget. That is, assessing the availability of system and information for the business operation. That is, keeping the lights on, reducing incidents of downtime, impaired speeds, proper data, proper data management, and in-house arrangement for special or additional features. Second, the level of maturity of IT systems in organization as judged by the level of contribution to the business operation and execution of strategy, process innovation, and level of alignment of the ICT business strategy to the business strategy. And third, the number and the significance of the projects initiated and completed on time in full. And obviously, a feedback from the user community. You must make sure that your users are able to really adopt new technologies they're able to use it to their best. And this involves a lot of user training. There are clear goals which are set, which um, uh, people derive revenues or probably reduce the risks in the organization. Uh, or uh, you will go beyond the call of duty to really uh, look for process improvements uh, to make sure that the business benefits uh, from some of your skills. All this ties in, for example, uh, I'll be assessed on uh, the kind of training I've given people, the kind of, let's say, people pipeline I have. Uh, do I have a good succession plan? Um, do I have people probably who are satisfied in their jobs? Uh, do I have people uh, who are really willing you know, to work really without much grudges and things like that? Some, some of these things actually boil down to the leadership skills uh, which you develop to make sure that you have a working team. The role of the CIO is critical to the organization. Thus, the CEOs gathered here today should consider the following suggestions while interacting and managing the CIOs in his daily duties. The CEOs need to recognize and appreciate the role of information management in creating value to the business. The, the, the CEO is more or less, you know, this guy has thrived as a business manager uh, from day one when he started his career. And probably they just believe that um, uh, uh, no, once we want something, we dash to uh, CIO to implement. So they don't always come with a package to implement without an analysis going into it and things like that. Uh, so the relationship should be such that, you know, uh, the CEO needs to understand that, okay, for the business to run very well, uh, you require the uh, CIO to implement certain uh, uh, technologies or certain platforms to make things run, uh, which in most cases usually there's some disconnect. But further, okay, uh, there's some people be seeing your area as a cost center. Uh, they feel, okay, these guys, uh, you know, uh, they're consuming so much uh, and uh, their budget should be limited so much. So we, with that disharmony, at times we find that um, this drags back the organization because there are certain opportunities you can derive from the new and emerging technologies which you might not pick at the right time. And my friend, the competition probably has moved on and you're left behind. So it's very, it's very important uh, to get uh, a CEO who really understands the functions of a CIO uh, to really make sure that the organization takes advantage of uh, new and emerging technologies. They also need to engage the CIOs early in the strategy and process such that the CIOs can undertake transformation and give enough mandate to them to organize and be ready for IT. Basically what happens is that um, uh, the CEO in most cases, uh, he'll be looking at revenues, you know, he has his targets on revenues. On one hand, uh, you are very technical and definitely you also understand the business. So um, any, uh, let's say, you probably be looking at the world in diff two different ways. You'll be looking for ways for providing solutions, the other person will be looking for ways of generating revenues. And uh, at times when all this really are not uh, taking a good perspective, you know, they're really divergent. Uh, the way they are, because I'll be trying to bring in the best system and I'll not be looking at cost if I really feel that the cost is not an issue. Well, at the same time, the CEO will be looking at, okay, fine, you give me a solution, but it's much beyond my budget. So some of these things are really managed at a certain level. What happens in most cases is that um, um, 
In terms of communication, uh, we keep each other informed at every stage of implementation or any other project we are running. So uh, we agree that in terms of costing, in terms of what needs to be done, it's still within uh, whatever the business requires to be done. So we make sure that there's co constant communication uh, so that we don't lose focus on uh, what the business requires. The CEOs are also important in providing CIOs with the opportunity to develop and broaden their skills and improve their leadership competences in the units that they run. On long term, if you look at this organization, uh, we've had quite a number of uh, people who have risen from my position and uh, they've been CEOs or even head of regions. So uh, in this one, actually, there's no restriction. I, don't, I cannot restrict myself, unless it's my choice, you know, that I want to remain as a professional in IT or whatever it is. But in terms of opportunities uh, in this organization, uh, you can be what you want. It depends on how much effort uh, you put to change your career. Failure to do so will result in the CIOs continually having one of the shortest average lifespans estimated at between 21 to 24 months and living up to the tongue-in-cheek acronym for CIO being career is over. Having discussed the qualities and attributes of the CIO, it emerges that this valuable resource influences the success of your organization. We have posted our research findings on the SBS e-learning site for your review. Our team is also available to take your questions and discuss further the CEO-CIO relationship.